Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, it keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform by all means don't miss the good life devotion any day now welcome to today's episode with dr david Bindon. wow praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah it is such a joy once again to welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite good life devotion the Good Life Devotion is a daily devotional teaching of the truth of God's word that comes to us on various platforms. That means that on this same platform, we are going to come to you tomorrow at the same time. And um, we are excited by what the Lord is doing in our generation in a sense that uh, he has a neighbor that's encountered as faithful, granting to us this unique ministry of um, bringing these truths on a daily basis to the entire Good Life Devotion family all around the world. We know that these truths that the Lord is bringing to us, they are meant to deliver to us nuggets of kingdom realities that will cause us to enjoy the great life that Jesus brought to all mankind on this earth. Secondly, the teachings are deeper and they are intentional to bring the body of Christ into a state of maturity where we arrive at the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, and also to make us effective in the work of the ministry, so that irrespective of the denominations in which we are, together as a body, we can be more effective at bringing many more humans into God's eternal plan for their lives. As we often do every week, we take a subject and look at it from various perspectives throughout the week, and this is not going to be different except in the intensity of the power and the reality of God's word. We are going to be dealing with a fundamental yet uh, powerful subject of the life that Jesus came to give to the world and its implications. And so we're going to start off today by looking at the topic, Jesus came to give life. Jesus came to give life, shall we pray. Eternal and everlasting Father, we are excited today as always by the reality of your word that is transforming our lives forever. Thank you that as these rays pervade our lives, demons are dislodged from bodies, minds, homes, companies, and the reality of Christ takes over. Thank you for the renewing of our minds, the rising to a new level of consciousness that makes us walk in the reality of the new creation that we have become in Christ Jesus. Thank you, now and forever. Amen. All right. Jesus came to give life. John chapter 10 verse 10 is our main scripture for today. And it says that, The thief cometh not, 
but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Praise God. If you look at the place that John chapter 10 verse 10 is, it started all the way from John chapter 10 verse 1 when Jesus started talking about the sheepfold and the right way into the sheepfold. And he finally stated something that all that came before him um, were thieves. Then he stated the reason or the work that a thief does, then he says that a thief will never come. Anytime he comes, he comes to do three things. Either one of them or more of them or all of them. Number one, he comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. Now, there are a lot of uh, understandings of what Jesus meant when he said all those that came before him were thieves and all that. Um, let me just read what we have here that's better for you as we look at this introduction. We said here that things that steal from humans, the quality of life God ordained for them, and ultimately kill and destroy their lives were referred to as thieves. Now, these things that Jesus referred to as thieves, they could be religious persons. They could be religious systems with their doctrines. They could be human philosophies, or they could even be demonic personalities. Whichever way or whichever kind you think he was referring to, the most important is what the thing does. Whether it's a religious system, or a religious person, or demons, or whoever, Jesus summarized the impact of their work in the lives of men. What they do is they steal the quality of life that God ordained for mankind. They end up killing mankind and they end up destroying mankind. Now, in contrast to these works that the thief comes to do, Jesus now plainly stated his mission. Then he says, contrary to what the thief does, stealing, killing, and destroying, I came that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Wow. Praise God. Jesus clearly stated his mission. Now, in the next as a, a few minutes left for today, I'd like us to look at the discussion. Jesus came to give life and a few uh, thoughts. Um, the first one is that in talking about the truth that Jesus came to give life, we are not bringing to you another theological teaching that you're already aware of. But there's something the Lord wants you to understand. Praise the Lord. You see, in this world, there are two kinds of people. Those that have received Jesus and those that have not received Jesus. These are the two clear categories of people on this earth. Now, it's important to understand that there is a difference between those who have received or those who believe in Jesus and those who have not. A lot of um, thoughts religious ideas and um, you know things some are called new age, new thought, Eastern religions or whatever they are, sometimes try to make it look like um, <laughs> Jesus 
was just a happening in the cosmic system and that um, everyone is a son of God. Yeah, but what they don't know is that there's a difference between God creating everyone and all being sons of God because of that and those who have actually become born of God because they receive Christ. Because in John chapter 1 verse 11, it says that he came to his own and his own received him not. Verse 12 says that, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So every human being was born of man and woman. That means of blood, of the will of man, of the will of flesh. And because God is the one who created the whole world, yes, you'd be right to say everybody is the son of God. But God makes a difference between those who are born of blood, born of the will of man, born of the will of the flesh, and those who are born of God because they have received Jesus. Jesus is not only a point of the dividing line of times in history, he is also a point of the dividing line of species between the human and the sons of God. It is very important for you to understand when we talk about Jesus came to give life. Now, if you look at Mark chapter 16, verse 15, let's quickly go there. The book of Mark chapter 16, the 15th verse, it says that. Verse 15, he says that. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This was after he rose again from the dead. Then he started talking in verse 6. He said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So people of God, or people watching me right now, Jesus makes a difference. A person who believes in him is saved. A person who does not believe in him is damned, condemned. I give you another example. John chapter 3, verse. You can take it right away from verse 16, but because of time, let me just read verse 17. He said, Oh no, okay, all right. So with what I just said, some people say, oh, then Jesus came to condemn. And you know, some people have taken this uh, uh, thought perspective of God is just so good and there is no judgment in God, you know, and all that kind of thing. And but look at what Jesus said. Let me start from verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So he loves everybody, so he did something. Verse 17, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So this is the love of God. Yes, God is love. Now look at it, verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already <laughs> because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So there is a clear difference on this earth right now between those who have believed Jesus and those who have not believed Jesus. What did he say? He is condemned already. Oh, time. But this is the truth. When Jesus came, if you read Oh, Romans, let me see if I can quickly touch there. You know, the scriptures are so beautifully interwoven. Romans chapter 5, if I take you to verse 18, it says this. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. So judgment came upon all men to lead unto condemnation. I will explain that. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So, listen to this carefully. There are three things happening in each of these two things. Offense was judged. So, when Adam sinned, it was judged that it was wrong. So, judgment came. Now, when someone is judged to be wrong, he's supposed to be condemned into a certain punishment. Okay? So, by one man's offense, judgment came upon all towards condemnation. If God had condemned everyone already, Jesus could not have been able to save anybody. But though all were judged, judgment came upon all, they were yet to be condemned. And then Jesus came to intercede 
Okay? So the death of Jesus came in and took what they were supposed to take. The punishment of their condemnation. Are you catching this? So now, something has happened now. It says, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification. So now that Jesus intercepted the condemnation, he brought a universal righteousness unto all men. So every man now is righteous before God as a gift. If you don't believe it, let me show you what he meant by the free gift here. Verse 17. Just go one verse before then. It says, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So it's the gift of righteousness he's talking about. It. So now let's go to verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all. Which is the free gift? The free gift of righteousness. So Jesus obeyed God. He was righteous. So the free gift came upon all. Towards what? Unto justification. Remember, there's always a towards. So there's also unto justification of life. So every man has now been made righteous. Jesus has reconciled and redeemed the whole world. But each person must now receive Christ unto the justification of life. If a person does not receive Christ, then what happens is that even though he was on the path to condemnation and Jesus intercepted, he has refused the path of redemption. Therefore, he's, he's going to continue on his path of condemnation that he has been already. Are you following this? So that's what the meaning of John 3, 18, when he said that he that does not believe is already condemned because there was a judgment unto condemnation. But before man could be condemned and cast into destruction, Jesus intervened. If anyone refuses him, it is no more because he was a sinner. It is because he has refused the gift of righteousness. He has not believed in Christ to justification of life. Is that okay? The point here was to let you know that Jesus, 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 Jesus that we preach. We are not talking about some joking something here. Jesus when a person receives Jesus, he becomes totally different from any other person who has not believed in Jesus, irrespective of where they were born, the religion in which they are, the education, all these don't matter. That's number one. Number two, what is the difference between a person who has received Christ and a person who has not received Christ? The difference is in what Jesus brought to the world. In John 10, he said that the thief came in about to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. So what then is the difference between the one who has believed in Jesus and the one who has not believed? John chapter 6, verse 47. John 6, 47. It says, this is Jesus talking. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. He that believeth hath. So those who have believed in Christ, they have life. Those who have not believed in Christ, they don't have life. Life is the dividing line between those who have believed in Christ and those who have not believed in Christ. It is not religion. It is not joining a church. It is not behaving in a western way. It is life. Why? I am come that they might have life. He said it and he fulfills it. If you believe in Jesus today, as he has said, what you get is life. Praise God. Praise God. Let's go to 1 John 5, 12. 1 John. Oh, thank you, dear Lord Jesus. We love you forever. Let me read verse 11. It says, and this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. Brothers and sisters in the Lord and people of the world, God has given to us eternal life. Why should death continue to reign? We shall delve into these matters in the, time, in the days to come. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Who is that? Jesus Christ. Verse 12 makes it clear. He that hath the son hath life. He that hath not the son of God had not life. This is the difference. 
on this earth, it doesn't matter where you are, who you are, I mean, in which religion you are, it doesn't matter. Question is, do you have life? Do you have eternal life? This is the differentiating factor. Now, we're talking about the truth that when you receive Jesus, you have eternal life because this is what Jesus came to bring to the world. And that's back to our topic. Jesus came to give life. And that's our, our main scripture, John 10, 10. I am come that they might have life. John 3, 16, we just read it, but let's reread it again for emphasis. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. This is what Jesus came to give. This is why the one who receives Jesus has everlasting life. The one who receives Jesus has life. Everything else that was in the world was stealing man's life, killing man, and destroying him. God sent a one-time solution. Life. Oh, man, be roko zibi hakadumbra kizate. Oh, glory to God. Are you following this? Listen, if you want to understand life, go back to the book of Genesis. In the garden, in chapter 2, all the way to 3, after God made all the trees in the garden of Eden, there were two significant trees. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Man was given freedom to eat every tree, including the tree of life. The only tree that he was warned against was the tree he went in to eat. Now, he neglected the tree of life. And because he went into a state of corruption, that tree of life has something. If you eat it, you live and you don't die. Now, God drove them out of the garden. If you go to Genesis 3 from verse 22 to 23, God drove them out of the garden so that they will not eat of the tree of life and add living forever to their corrupt nature. That would have made it impossible for God to redeem and, 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 and adopt man. So God drove them out of the garden and protected the tree of life so that they will not eat and live forever. That tree is live forever. It's a tree of life. It is eternal life. Now, my God, what man lost in the beginning is what God brought back to man in Jesus. So Jesus is now the open access to the tree of life that Adam lost. So anyone who receives Jesus is as if he went back into the Garden of Eden and partook of the tree of life. Oh, praise God. Praise God. So when the Bible says that, that they, they should not perish but have everlasting life, He's talking about that tree of life. It will come there gradually. But have you noticed that when we talk about everlasting life, everybody thinks his own way, what he thinks everlasting life is. And we, it has been so spiritualized that it does not include life to the body. But we'll come there in the days to come. What was the tree of life supposed to do in the Garden of Eden? The truth said is that Jesus came into this world to give life. If you say, I believe in Jesus, you must be awakened to the truth that you have eternal life. And even at this level, we are communicating at a baby or an adolescent level. If you are not aware that when you receive Jesus, you have eternal life, you are building on a pseudo foundation of Christianity. Because Christianity is built on this life Jesus brought that we have when we believe in him. There are more scriptures that you can read. In the book of John made it clear that the only reason why we believe in Jesus is that we have like 1 John 4, 9. This is how God showed us his love. He sent his son that we might live. If you go to John 5, 39 to 40, it says the search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life and yet you will not come to me and have life. Finally, in John 20, 31, after writing everything, John summarizes the reason why the things were written it's so that we will believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Christ, and that by believing, we will have life. The reason why a person must believe in Jesus 
is that when you believe, you have life. Are you one who says you have believed in Jesus? I'm telling you, you have life. Are you aware of that life and what that means? Are you one who is here to receive Jesus? Let me tell you, you're not about to receive a religion. You're about to receive life. And that life takes you out of condemnation and ushers you into being a son of God. Have you watching us today? You have not yet received this life. This is what it means to be born again. This is what it means to, to have Christ in you. Believe that he came to die and he took away the sin of man and reconciled man. You have already been reconciled. Now believe that he offers this life. His Lord, declare him as Lord. And that life will fill you. It's already here. You become conscious of it filling you by the Holy Ghost. And you'll be born of God. Being one who now has the life of God. If you want this to happen, say this with me with all your heart. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I now understand that you came purposely to give me life. Jesus, I believe you died and rose again to make this life available. Jesus, I declare you Lord of my life. I receive this life now. And I'm born again. Thank you forever. Hallelujah. So then with all your heart, you are born again. Right. Get planted in Bible teaching and practicing church and remain in that fellowship until Jesus comes. We are going to come your way again in our next episode. Let's take a look at this subject matter of what Jesus came to give to the world from another light. Till then, life is good. Enjoy. If you just got born again today and would like to fellowship with us, call our numbers displayed and connect with any of our new creatures fellowship branches nearest to you. Dambai Pasa, Inquanta Takrade, Kaswa Lagon, Tachiman, Tema New Town, Ashama New Town, Tema Ashaman, Gulf City, Nungwa, Inkonya, Kolegono Tree Speaking. Kolegono Ga speaking, Kolegono English speaking, the Multinationals Church or our virtual church online. We will be glad to fellowship with you. Do call us. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bendan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Bendan. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy.